Next on the agenda is the March 19, 2013 special meeting of the Glendale City Council. May we have a roll call. Council members Friedman. Here. Manukian. Here. Jarian. Here. Weaver. Here. Mayor Quintero. Here. Mr. Ochoa. Or actually read the uh, item into the... The agenda for, by the way, uh, the agenda for this uh, meeting uh, for March 19, 2013, special public meeting of the council was posted on Thursday, March 14, 2013 on the bulletin board outside City Hall in accordance to the Brown Act. Before you as a public hearing, Director of Community Development, this was continued from March 5, 2013 regarding proposed central Wilson 153-unit residential mixed-use project to be located at 130 North Central Avenue. 1A is a motion approving Stage 1 design review subject to comments and conditions of approval. All right, I will open the public hearing. You know what, before we go to you, uh, Mr. Cho, I do have one uh, card for oral communication, so... Uh, uh, I'll call Mr. Aram Kazazian to the. Uh... Has to be with regard to the actual item, right? Was that for housing, or did he submit on this item? No, he submitted on this item. Oh, okay. Is, yeah. is, it is for this item, Mr. Kazazian. There's only, There's only one special meeting, so yeah. it's probably for. Right. Well, you would be allowed to speak at oral communications, and then. In... But there is no oral communication. Oh, okay. Not You're not allowed meeting. to speak at oral communication. There is no oral communication. I stand corrected. All right. Um, and then he will be uh, speaking. Uh, the course of the uh, hearing. Mr. Ochoa. Yes, sir. This is uh, an exciting opportunity to complete the, uh, the Wilson Corridor. As you know, uh, Council has previously approved uh, working with Holland Partners uh, projects at Wilson and Brand, and then looking to Wilson and Orange uh, with the similar motif of buildings. And now we are at the opportunity where we've arrived at the, uh, uh, the point at which uh, this development team is looking at uh, Wilson and Central. And as I say, that would complete that uh, corridor in accordance with the vision of the downtown specific plan. We're looking at 153 uh, unit multifamily residential uh, program, and uh, Vilia Zimatitis, our uh, senior planner, will give you the details of this uh, stage one design review. Good afternoon, Mayor Quintero, Council members. The Holland Partner Group is requesting a Stage 1 Conceptual Design Review approval for their latest mixed-use project located at 130 North Central Avenue. This would be the southeast corner of Central and Wilson Avenues, which is currently occupied by the Big Five and Sit and Sleep. The uh, project will include, as stated, 153 residential apartment units and includes either approximately 5,000 square feet of ground floor commercial space or there is an option of providing five li live work units instead. A parking will be provided on the ground and within two levels of subterranean garage with a total of 223 parking spaces. Access is taken off both Central and Wilson Avenues. Currently, the project is proposed at 85 feet in height, six stories, which is permitted by right. There is a floor area ratio bonus that is being requested in exchange for additional publicly accessible open space to be provided at the corner of Central and Wilson Avenues. The project complies with all other DSP development standards and no variances are requested. Uh, staff has worked closely with the Holland Partner Group as well as with the Carrier Johnson team and staff is recommending approval of the Stage 1 Conceptual Design Review. I would like to turn the meeting over to Mr. Tom Warren from the Holland Partners Group if there are no questions for staff. Could you show us the open space that they're providing? Uh, we actually do not have a slide, but I believe that the project team will be, ha will be showing one in their <coughs> proposal project presentation. Any other questions? No, that's it. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, members of the council, Mr. Ochoa. It's good to be here again to present the stage one conceptual review for Central and Wilson. Uh, it's this this project is still conceptual in nature, and we are we're working on the environmental and CEQA studies 
uh, for the impacts in the area for traffic and, and, and all that, which will be presented later at our stage two approval, um, which is a, a follow-up to this initial presentation. Uh, as Mr. Ochoa said, this project completes the block along Wilson and the downtown specific plan's vision for the area. It emphasizes the pedestrian scale and enhances the walkability of the neighborhood. Uh, it's, this project is consistent with all of the downtown specific plan standards. We're not requesting any variances or exceptions in this application. Uh, in this application, we've, applied, we've, we've included a placeholder for 4,900 uh, 4, square feet of space or five live work units, including spe uh, sufficient parking to meet code for either of those alternatives. Uh, we've also explored the possibility of expanding the retail uh, to 10, 11,000 square feet, which would be enough to accommodate either of the existing uses on the site if they choose to return, either Big Five or Sit and Sleep. Um, so we've confirmed that, that we could e pretty easily modify the ground floor to accommodate that and present something different if that's the way things work out in our Stage 2 application. Uh, in summary, I'm, I'm excited to be here again. I, I'm excited about this opportunity to work on the last piece of the puzzle. Uh, for what we consider to be the best residential location in Glendale. It's been a pleasure working together with the city staff and my architectural team and, you know, on, on what, what we think can extend the architectural character we, we've started here on Wilson. Um, it's a natural, this project's a natural extension of, of the other two. So I'd like to turn this over to David Gonzalez from Carrier Johnson so he can give you a presentation with uh, some pictures and a little more detail on the proposed project. Thank you. Mayor Quintero, City Council members, thank you very much for having us here today. Before um, we start the presentation of the design from Center and Wilson, um, we, we, I would like to first uh, uh, refer back to our previous two projects, Brandon Wilson, we have Orange and Wilson. First. I'm sorry? Name for the record. Name for the record. Uh, David Gonzalez, uh, design principal for Kerry Johnson. Um, before we start talking about our project, uh, Central and Wilson, first uh, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about the architecture for uh, Brandon Wilson and Orange and Wilson as a reference of what influenced our design for Central and Wilson. Um, starting with Brandon Wilson, the influences of the design there was more of a commercial nature. By that I mean we had oversized large expanses of windows or window openings that refer in scale to the uh, 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 Glendale City Center office building. As we move on to the Orange and Wilson project, uh, our intention there was to begin demassing the building as it relates to the neighborhood or the residential, the local residential housing communities to the west. In doing so, we create a serpentine motion in the building to begin to descale the building into components between two, one and two story in scale. For our site in Central and Wilson, we basically have taken both design considerations that we have applied on Brandon Wilson and Orange and Wilson as the basis of our design. So with that, what we did in our site, we basically mirror image the C-shaped building that you see here, Orange and Wilson, and put it on our site, in essence connecting both courtyards together. And this image basically shows the intention of our design. The, the, the second element of our design is to kind of begin to step down the massing of the building as it relates to the residential neighborhood to the west side of Wilson. I also pay uh, a close uh, attention to some of these large openings that we have in our design that are basically borrowed from, the, from uh, Brandon Wilson and, uh, and, and, and creating a strong connection from Brandon, uh, Brandon Wilson to Central uh, and Wilson. In this rendering, uh, our intention for the design is pretty obvious. Not that you see it in three dimensions. Obviously, this facade begins to speak more in a commercial tone to Central Avenue. Uh, the step down along Wilson Avenue in these facades is really start, as I said, 
uh, from Orange and Wilson project into our project, Central and Wilson, and eventually leading on to the residential neighborhoods. Um, this element of the design, which is more the public spaces that, that happen uh, uh, as part of our project, are also other building components that relate in scale to the um, residential neighborhood. Uh, our intention is to make a strong connectivity to that and also to lift this bar above Central Avenue so that this facade begins to have more of a commercial feel. And with that, I will introduce my partner, Michael Labar. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to skip through some of these uh, renderings which are in your packet, and I'm going to address some of the additional issues uh, that were asked a few minutes ago by Councilmember Manukian, specifically the public open space. On the ground floor at the corner of Central and Wilson, uh, you'll see in the darker blue color is the residential lobby, the leasing office, uh, components for the residents along Wilson Avenue. The light blue is the commercial space or the live work option along Central Avenue. In the upper left hand corner right here is a public open space with a design that we've included in the package which is approximately uh, 3,700 square feet or approximately 1,300 square feet above and beyond what would otherwise typically be required. So the design of that public open space is intentionally located at this corner opposite the future common plaza at the proposed Marriott Hotel across the street and also provides for uh, seating, additional landscape, enhanced paving features at this strategic corner. So it's not an afterthought by any means. It's an important strategic corner that complements what's intended to happen across the street. Also street trees and additional widened sidewalks both on Wilson and on Central Avenue exceeding the 12 foot minimum dimension on those streets. So in the green area here, for example, you see the enhanced landscaping here, enhanced paving and landscaping here for a total of nearly 20 feet of sidewalk in these two locations. Here's an enlargement of that area with the seating, a water feature, additional landscaping, outdoor seating. And the outdoor seating is also uh, somewhat sheltered from uh, the adjoining street by raised planter areas in the, in the public plaza. Um, moving along on the project, uh, an important aspect of what, what we are doing also is uh, proposing to vacate the alley between the two parcels on this block. Sorry, can I ask a question about the public space? Can you go sure. back? Sure. So is that area that goes down that becomes the entry to the retail, is that considered part of the open space? No, this space right in here is not part of that calculation. Okay. So it's only this rectangle right here that is part of that area calculation. And the widened sidewalk portion, is that counted? No. So this widened area in here, in here, are being counted as our base requirement for open space on site. So the public open space calculation is derived only from this area here and the amount of space above and beyond the requirements, basic requirements. And what was the approximate square footage of the uh, plaza uh, there? The, over, the overall plaza is over 3,700 square feet. The amount that is exceeding the base requirement is 1,275 square feet. Another important aspect of the project is the linkage between the two sites, completing the block. And that's, and that's achieved in this area where the alley can be vacated. And I should say that the alley being vacated only serves these two sites. No other adjoining property is, is served by that existing alley. By the vacating of the alley, we're able to create this additional courtyard space with amenities such as pool, outdoor seating, a fireplace, additional landscaping at this level that directly links to the Orange and Wilson site, and then continues on with the linkage through the Central and Wilson courtyard 
and actually penetrates through the building all the way throughout to Central Avenue with a portal at this location here with additional seating and an exciting overlook to Central Avenue at the upper courtyard level. So we literally link with natural light, air, and uh, landscaping all the way through out to Central Avenue. The residential units above are similar to those at Orange and Wilson and have a mixture of studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom units all contained in this location. You'll also see uh, right here the portal that I was referring to just a moment ago. And this is a, a rendering that illustrates, whoops, excuse me, back. What is the size of the smallest unit you have? Uh, the smallest studio unit is about uh, 600 square feet. I think your, the minimum in the downtown specific plan is 600 square feet. So we're right around 600 square feet with our smallest unit. And what is the largest, what is the average? Um, the how, average how, many, how many of the 600 units do you have, 600 square foot units? Um, we have of, a, of approximately 158 units. Um, what percentage is that? Uh, not 158 units of 600 square feet. Yeah, the units. studios would be about 20%. Is that about right? And I think about 20% of the units are maybe studios, okay. approximately. 30 studios. 30? 30%, 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30 or 30 units? Yeah. Uh, so of the 158 or 153, if, if we build the commercial option, um, of the 153, 30 would be studios, 88 would be one bedroom, 25 would be two bedroom, and 10 three bedroom. What's the size of the one bedroom? Uh, the one bedroom is approximately 725 to 750 square feet. They vary somewhat depending on where they are in the building. Just in conclusion, I, as um, my partner David pointed out earlier there is this um, transition from Central and Wilson stepping down through some of the mass articulation of the architecture along Wilson Avenue and then the large expression to the north and to the south relating to the future hotel across the street and the opening in the building out to Central Avenue above the, the commercial and or live work space below. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have today about the overall project or in, and its design. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, what is the bonus amount of uh, units that you are asking for? Or it's it's really it? not it's really not expressed in terms of number of units per se. Uh, the way the downtown specific plan is defined is there is a base floor area ratio of 3.0 allowed by right, and the incentive in the downtown specific plan such as public open space and other methods for achieving the incentive brings us to a 4.4 FAR. The maximum allowed is 5.2, but we're only... So you're getting uh, approximately a... About a, about a 1.4 FAR. 30% increase in your units or FAR? Uh, that's a... 3 point something uh, to 4 point something? 25 to 30%. That's about right. How does that translate into units? Um, I can't imagine that you have not done that calculation. It would. We could, we could build the same amount of units. I have to speak to the mic. We could build the same amount of units with a three FAR. They would just be smaller on average. We could instead of the. Uh, Wouldn't get the variation. Eighty-eight one bedrooms, parts. twenty-five two bedrooms, ten three bedrooms. If we did say. But what 60 are you doing studios up? and six and you know 101 bedrooms, we could come up with the whole thing in that size. I understand, size. but what are, you, what are you doing basically? That's what I'm asking. You. What are what are the plans? Are the plans to to make larger units or more units? The larger units, yeah. The, the number of units. I mean, if from a practical standpoint, it really comes down to how many cars we can fit in the garage and still meet code, and the garage on two levels below grade with the one level above grade? I'm satisfied with the answer that you're coming okay. up with larger units, not more units. <laughs> right. No, that's the theory. It's, as with many things, parking seems to set, dictate the way development patterns exist. So thank On you. On the issue of uh, parking, since 
on the issue of parking, uh, the next speaker will be undoubtedly talking about that. Um, how, what's your feeling about all of the buildings that you built or proposing to build to date? Do you feel there is adequate parking for your uh, tenants? Yes, there's certainly adequate parking. Uh, we, in some jurisdictions, don't require as much parking as, as Glendale, and in, in those cases, we'll often build more than the minimum requirement. Um, in Glendale, you have a fairly substantial parking ratio. Uh, it's, it's, it's not overly burdensome, but it's, it's about right for a downtown location, and so we're, we're right at a little above the parking required for, for code. Right. And in layman's terms, you have one parking uh, space for a single and two for a two-bedroom, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah, I believe it's, and the staff can correct me, maybe I'm not, might okay. not be fresh, I believe it's one per studio, 1.5 yeah. for one, and two for two and three bedrooms. Is that right? I believe that's the number, yeah. Right. Yeah, we, we met the code. I, I can't recall what yeah. it is. If I may, Mr. Mayor, the rationale for the downtown specific plan parking ratio is pretty much around one per bedroom. Yeah, which is standard. Uh, and then, of course, you also have the uh, rental sort of daily zip car possibility. Yeah, yeah. We uh, on on Brandon Wilson and Orange and Wilson, we've committed to do that, and we will do that here. As well uh, we have as to bicycle, make sure that bicycle lockers also correct. Have your bike. Uh, Concerned about my bike. Yes, we would we would do the same Mr. thing here. Uh, Manukian, who eventually will be moving into one yes. of these units, and uh, I thought I was. Uh, well, no, you and I are moving in first, but oh. when, when <laughs> Mr. Uh, Manukian gets older, then he'll be. He'll be next. Actually, I predict his kids will be uh, there ahead of him. But did you have a question? I had a question uh, regarding the water usage. Is this going to be dual plumbed? Is there recycled water that's uh, intended to be used? In this? We're not planning to do dual plumbing with the gray water system in this project, no. Well, not gray water, because gray water is different than recycled water. Uh, so with regard to recycled, I know that there's water availability. There are mains that, that run down central with the recycled water. Uh, I, don't, don't think, I don't believe don't we think have plans to do that. that. If it's required by code, we will do it. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of that. Our project manager, Mark Berry. Actually, WP um, does require that it be plumbed for future recycled water. Um, but it doesn't go into the podium. It's more for the landscaping at the ground level. And the uh, recycled line stops at Colorado and Central. It does not go north. So in the event that, that the uh, – aren't we redoing Central Avenue? Correct me if I'm wrong. We are doing it right now, and it's a prescient question from the standpoint of Mr. Zern and I are meeting this week to talk about the extension of our recycled water system because if we have the street opened up for water projects, then we would want to lay the extra pipe. That would make sense. But we're uh, – Central is a uh, – is a street repaving, but we are looking at all different options, so I will make sure that we discuss that as well. I absolutely think that's important. If the building is uh, plumbed and we lay the line at a certain point, it'll be, uh, be easy to, to hook it up. Okay, uh, we don't have any other questions. We'll go with uh, speaker cards. Aram Kazazian, followed by Elisa S. Marion. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Aram Kazazian. Uh, yes, the parking, I checked the plans. I took it with me. I read it. Uh, it is to the DSP, which I don't believe is sufficient. It's still parking one parking for the one bedroom, one parking for the studio, and the two bedrooms and three bedrooms got two, two parking, and they do have like about 40 some tandem spaces. So you have to get a, give a variance for that. But the main concern I have, it doesn't have sufficient landscaping or trees outside the building. You know, it's a very kind of uh, blood, nothing there to absorb the, uh, the carbon monoxide, like, uh, like I've been saying this for a long time. And uh, it, it just the trees absorb all that the smog come out of the cars, and it's a cleaner environment, better environment. It doesn't do that. And the reclaimed uh, water, uh, uh, I don't know, Johnny, what you said, 
I think that should be done. I've been doing that for the last 20 years. In fact, I've, every building almost a plumb, a plumb for your clean water. Uh, it goes into the to toilets. That's a very good system to do. You can use a lot of the reclaimed water. What I think all all uh, all buildings should be plumbed for that. So maybe that's a consideration too. I go back almost 25 years. I've been doing that. Thank you. Elisa is Marion, followed by Dennis Di Pietro. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor Quintero. Council members, staff. My name is Elisa Smarian. I am the immediate past president, 2011-2012, board of directors with the Armenian American Chamber of Commerce, Greater Los Angeles Chapter and Central Board. I have met up with the applicants last year uh, on the project of Orange and Wilson, and I'm excited to be here today before you to share my thoughts about the continuation of Wilson Avenue block by Holland Partners. This is a welcome cont continuation of the improvement of downtown Glendale. The residents and families of Central and Wilson will be greatly benefited and the small local businesses also. It is a beautiful design that improves the character of our neighborhood. I and the Board of Directors encourage strongly to approve this project. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis DiPietro, followed by Armin Zakarian. Good afternoon, Council Members, Mayor Mr. Ochoa. Um, uh, on behalf of the Glendale Chamber of Commerce, as, a, as current chairman of the board, uh, we had a, a board meeting today and unanimously support this project as we have done the other uh, two components of, the, uh, of, the, of their project. Uh, it's, it's heartening to see these kinds of projects uh, economically viable without um, uh, benefit of subsidies, and uh, it's certainly an indication of the, um, the vitality and strength of the Glendale uh, economy to do so. Uh, we had a, a discussion, uh, one of our board members is a transportation expert, and we had a, a good discussion about the impact of project like this uh, on, on traffic, and it was of the opinion that, that a project like this, in fact, would be well suited for this area, and we look forward to its implementation and of all these uh, components that Holland is uh, is doing right now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Armin Zakarian, followed by Henry Amar. Good afternoon, Council and Mayor. I just want to speak about this this project. I think it should be approved because it's going to bring more viability to the neighborhood and bring young life and more people to the local area that will come and use the restaurants and all the other facilities. And it has been proven with other projects, like the Crusoe's project, that this area could continue to sustain the growth and become more viable as a more of an urban area, as the plan has said. Thank you. And I think your project should be approved. Thank you. Thank you. Henry Amar, followed by Daniel Manasarian. Hello again. I know I'm here for this project again. Um, my name is Henry Amar. I, um, I, I like this. I like things like this. I hope we can do more things like this in Glendale. Um, I was just in New York, and I love walking outside and seeing people and seeing restaurants and, and seeing things more alive. And, um, granted, it's probably not, it's not going to be New York, but, but I just think that on a smaller scale, it would be fun to just have people to walk downtown and walk down Brand and see other faces and hopefully um, not just younger faces, but not hipper, but, you know, just something more alive. So it would be nice. I, I love it. I hope we can do more things like that. Thank you for the vision. I love how Glendale is really progressing. I was born and raised here, and I love to see it grow and to see it kind of come with the times, and I think this is... Thank you. Thank you. I just want to clarify that it was all my vision, not theirs. Just so oh, <laughs> you're doing a great job, then. <laughs> Daniel, yeah, you can tell. Daniel Manasarian. Uh, hi, council members. Uh, my name is Daniel Manasarian, and uh, I'm currently a student at USC, and I've been living in Glendale my whole life. And uh, recently, I heard about this project, and um, personally, I think it's a great project. Um, you know, it's great for the younger generation, like they said. 
So like younger, younger people like me, like probably like later on, 27, 28, when, I'm, when I want to find like a place to live, um, I don't know, like the Louise area, Jackson area, I don't know about those buildings because they're more, like they're older, but uh, buildings like this, I think uh, I'd more, like I would want to move in there, you know, more than the other buildings, so yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's the uh, final card. Are there any, I'll close the uh, public hearing. Are there any comments or questions? No. Mr. Weaver. For the USC student, I suppose you'll be living in the village that SC is building to the north of Jefferson. That'll be a nice transition. That's a nice renovation, that area. Um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with this. The downtown specific plan is doing exactly what it was intended to do. Stop development in the residential neighborhoods and concentrate development downtown. Make downtown a walking corridor. It's active. It's exceeding. It'll continue. It's just a question of the economy, allowing more of this to happen downtown. We don't have to go through a lot of variance processes now. We know what we're going to be getting over the years with what, what we did over the decade of developing that downtown specific plan. So it's going to be nice. I hope I live long enough to see Grand and Central revitalized totally. There's a ways to go. But we're making strides in it. I was just trying to figure that open space. You, know, you look at pictures and stuff, and you're trying to visualize that 3,700 square feet. Trying to break it down. That's about, well, in one formal, about 16 yards by 25 yards. I relate it to a football field, actually. Right on. Um, so I, I can see 25 yards. I know that's a pretty good size by 16. Um, it's going to look, look good there. It's not a little postage stamp open space. So I'm fine with it. It's a nice transition. You're stepping down as you go west from Brand. Uh, anybody else tries to do we'll be telling them the same thing. Or take a look at this, and this is the way to go. So I'm fine with it. Mr. Manukian. Yeah, I'm in favor. Of it. I'm not much of a fan of, of the brown color, I think. How about purple? You guys like brown? Yeah, you guys from USC. You guys like the color? No, no, no. Neutral? Is It's neutral? All right, they said, okay, I'll go with it. I don't know. I'm fine. Uh, Jerry. Um, I like the building and the design, but I do have a concern with the number of units that are coming online and, are, and that are in construction right now. I'd like someone from the planning staff to address that and, and tell us whether you envisioned, yes, did you envision the, um, the number of units coming online as quickly and at the same time as they are now when we develop the, the downtown specific plan? As we were, we were preparing the downtown specific plan, we actually uh, presented the, the plan that it will be poised to allow development to come in and it will be flexible enough to respond to the market forces when there are such forces to bring in development. But there is a finite number of units that could be built. I think Glendale, because we have the downtown specific plan, could allow the developers when they were ready to start after the downturn in the economy to step in and take advantage of the plan and come in with these visions. In essence, yes, this is doing exactly what we envisioned it to do. Whether or not we envisioned it uh, to be do done in just a few years or in over a, a decade, we couldn't tell at the time. And uh, we do think that this is the time to build. And when the, the, the economy slows down, that will be the time that will probably be maxed out. So it's, it's exactly doing what we, we hoped it would do and how we presented it to you. I would also submit that it's to a degree self-regulating because there are only so many parcels that are available that would allow this kind of development, certainly without a redevelopment agency to assist in the assembly of a site. So I think what you'll end up saying is maybe after this project, a handful of others trickle in as those opportunities start to evaporate because they're converting to, um, to uh, urban development. And then we'll wait and see what the state does, because this won't exhaust the full capacity of the DSP and the EIR, the Downtown Specific Plan, the Environmental Impact Report that was prepared 
Um, but it will, I think the market on its own will begin to ease off uh, just in time for the state to reauthorize some form of tax increment finance for uh, commercial development. My, my concern is this. When we first did the downtown specific plan, um, I didn't think it was a great plan, but I thought it was a good plan. And through my experience, good plans get to be great plans through <coughs> refinement and through uh, continued modification. The problem we have here is we're not going to have a chance to make any modification. Boom, everything is there. Let's say we misjudged the number of cars that these one and two bedrooms are going to have, just for one small example. Let's say we misjudged the, um, the traffic flow that is going to be generated. We don't have a chance over the course of decades to modify it and make the downtown specific plan the great plan that it could be. Do um, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, uh, it's boom. Here it is right there, and you got it, as opposed to a slower, more methodical process where after every few projects come up, we can adjust it and modify it and amend it to really solve any flaws that we have in the, in the plan. I mean, you can't say the DSP is God's gift to planning at this point. I, I would Don't beg to that. differ. <laughs> the DSP is Don't being copied that. by many other communities, and when uh, when you know you know you have a successful plan, when other communities mimic it. Long Beach was the first to mimic our downtown specific <laughs> plan. Recently, uh, we have come across two other plans that are being developed in other communities that are almost uh, to the visuals are being copied from the downtown specific plan. I must say, though, uh, in this case, because the downtown specific plan was a development plan, we, we were hoping that we would not make any room for mistakes in it, that it was not going to be the kind of policy plan that you fine-tune like the Hillside Development Ordinance, uh, the Hillside Ordinance, that you would say we play with these restrictions and we get it right eventually. In this case, we knew this would open up the door to development. We wanted development to be done properly right from the get-go. And Mr. Loomis has been busy over the last few years. You might have, uh, you've been around in every one of the amendments. We've had to amend the downtown specific plan as we come to some of the numeric standards are a little bit off. We have adjusted those and we, we may continue continue to do this, to do so in the future. Uh, so I, I, that's, what I, I'm, that's what I'm getting at. That's and right. my, my point is that uh, by the time we get around to finding a better way or perhaps a more perfect plan, since it is from above, I guess, um, the great planner in the sky, uh, it will be built out. Central is basically built out from, I mean, that whole block uh, and even coming north. You've got the legendary towers. You've got the orange on Lex. You've got the one across the street. You've got this one, the one on Brandon Wilson. Uh, you've got the Joanne Fabrics. These are many units coming on. We hope that our road map and that our, our planning concepts are correct. But should there be a, a problem, should a problem arise, we won't have much left to, to modify because it will be so built out so quickly. My problem isn't that it's getting built out. That's great. But the problem is that it's getting built out so quickly that should we define and detect a better way to do something about, amongst all the different categories that planners deal with, it'll be too late because it's already done. And that's my only comment. And in the past, my, um, those were my comments to the press on the pace at which development is going on downtown. Not the fact that it's being developed, but the pace uh, is almost uh, you know, a, a breathtaking pace from what we've seen in the past 10, 20 years in Glendale. So that's just my comment. And, and it is not about the particular project itself. They're up to code. They've got, they followed our plan exactly. Uh, but what if our plan could have been better? Uh, that's that's my Mr. Can I add to that? I, well, you can sit down. I ask these very questions of the different developers lately. We're starting to build too fast. We're getting criticisms. Too much downtown, whatever. I says, are you sure the market is ready for this in Glendale? And the answer is yes. We're more affordable than Pasadena or Burbank on the west side. Uh, cost per foot, the rentals, everything 
are less in Glendale, and they insist they're not they're not asking for anything from us. They're simply all funded by themselves. And why would they risk the multi-million dollars of investments in here, considering the competition they have up and down Central? They say the market is there, and they will fill. How fast? Don't know. But what I am seeing is Central is going to become a residential street, a high-rise, in essence, you want to call six stories high, but from um, Broadway North, uh, most of the buildings eventually will be residential buildings and the commercial will be on brand and you will live in these and you will walk one or two blocks and you'll be downtown where you will have restaurants and nightclubs, etc. on there. So you know, I asked the questions because I didn't want to get criticized by the public that uh, we're allowing too much, but uh, we can't stop it. And besides, they're spending the money and say it will work. Every instance, they've told me that. Three minutes. <coughs> um, just want to remind everyone that this is a stage one design uh, review uh, hearing only. We're not talking about the EIR has not been prepared for the project, so we're not talking about any environmental impacts or anything else. But this is a by right project. They've conformed with all of the codes. Um, they're not asking for any variances um, that I'm aware of. Uh, so, and I think the design is very appropriate, and I think that this whole block will be, as people who came to, to speak, a very dynamic and interesting place to live and to visit. So I'm very much in favor of the project. And I also wanted to point out, and I was going to ask Mr. Hagani, that as far as I know, the EIR that was prepared for the downtown specific plan allowed for a certain number of units, and we're nowhere near that number of units. So all of the growth that's been approved has been accounted for within that EIR process. So um, assuming that the EIR is correct, and I have no reason to believe it's not, uh, we shouldn't have any major impacts with, with traffic or anything else. I also point out that commercial real estate, if this was a shopping mall, would have a much huger impact, or even an office building would have a much larger traffic impact than an apartment building where people tend to maybe leave once a day and come back once a day. So I think it's a nice project, and I look forward to seeing it under construction. Make some comments about the uh, DSP first. Um, I supported it all the way. I think we could have done uh, a little bit more in terms of uh, density. We really want an 18-hour downtown, as they say. Originally, some of the projects that were proposed were, in fact, 12, 16-story uh, type of condominiums. Uh, that didn't work out in the Great Recession. The projects that have come back are really underscaled. Yet I think uh, basically we're talking anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 in this wave of uh, development. I think that's just perfect. There's enough synergy in those units, especially with a younger demographics or an older demographic that may have in fact sold a home in Glendale, owns a second home in Newport Beach or, or Palm Springs, but yet wants to continue uh, to live here for business or just recreational purposes. Um, so I think this is the correct number of units coming out of this recession. It's obviously going to be a boom to the surrounding uh, businesses, whether it's the little restaurants across the street uh, there on Wilson or along Brand, the dry cleaners and all the rest, the Alex Theater, it's going to be a boom without uh, question. And I do think that an awful lot of these tenants, I think, are going to be working fairly close. I just have a feeling Disney, Whole Foods, uh, DreamWorks, whoever, all of the different uh, IHOP, all of the different corporate uh, entities in this city that have large uh, workforces, I think we're going to find uh, people who are going to move to these units and literally be able to walk to work or maybe ride a bike or take the uh, B line. So I think the impact is going to be minimal. Um, in terms of um, the unit itself, I, I mean, the um, project itself is just great. I mean, it ties in with the rest of the well-done uh, design starting at Brand. So it fills an entire uh, street, an entire neighborhood, so to speak. That open plaza is going to just be a knockout. 
um, and across the street, hopefully, we're going to have the uh, courtyard, the Marriott. So that's going to be just a wonderful corner, especially when you look at it now and see the uh, see the parking uh, uh, lot somewhat empty most of the time, and then the uh, the business itself. Big Five is a big, uh, uh, you know, very important sporting goods store. It's really the only one we have in the uh, city. But should they be persuaded to come back to that uh, site, I think they'll, their sales will definitely improve. Then another criticism that I hear from time to time, basically at the uh, political forums, since now we're uh, having campaigns, is the idea that uh, this, these buildings look like New York. New York, boy, I just don't think these people have visited New York. because <laughs> This is a far cry from anything in Manhattan or, or Queens or, or anywhere else. Uh, I think they are just perfect for Southern California and perfect for, uh, for the city of Glendale. I think the uh, mix, <clears throat> it's a typical mix. Uh, as a young man, uh, one of my first jobs in Los Angeles, I was a supervisor for Jack Kent Cook, former owner of the Lakers, who had buildings from Rancho Cucamonga to Santa Monica. And that's what we were always looking for, a nice mix of three bedrooms, two bedrooms, and, of course, uh, singles. So I think this is, uh, this is typical of what a... Uh, what a company, a REIT, would want to uh, buy and build, manage. So very excited about it and very happy that you chose Glendale. I know you have uh, opportunities all over the West, and I think the fact that you come to this uh, city makes me feel like we must be doing something right. Uh, it'll take you a while to fill these units. Not all 2,000 people will <laughs> come in at the same time, but over time I know you'll, uh, you'll have a excellent mix of uh, tenants. So I support it 100%. Mr. Mayor, could I ask one of the, uh, Hassan, are we getting one additional traffic lane uh, from Central to Brand on the south side? Uh, for, I, I don't think we do. I think the Central to, uh, on the south side of, I'm sorry, are you talking from Central Wilson? to Brand on the south side of Wilson. On Wilson. We are getting some right turn uh, lanes, but, uh, but not necessarily an, an additional lane. So it will still be one lane of traffic. Okay, do I have a motion? Yeah, I'll move 1A. Second. Roll call. Council members, Friedman? Yes. Manukian? Yes. Jarian? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Quintero? Yes. What's next? Other item? Motion to adjourn. Will we adjourn? Second. That's for the uh, City Council. We need to adjourn for the successor agents. It's council Chair. We got one next week, too, man. You guys got